sound. Hi, Legends DM. Do you hear sound now? Oh, no. Why was there no sound? Interesting. Well, we'll keep talking. So in case you missed it, just to review, because it seems we might be having some type of... Oh, about a sound oh, no. issue. We oh, no. have... There was a sound, sound issue. Now? Do we have sound? We've got sound now. All right. So for some reason, we didn't have sound. That was really weird. Oh, no. Um, but in case you didn't hear us today, we are talking about storytelling games as language arts. And the most and the two games we just talked about are Seekaboo and Chugga Choo for our very young friends. Um, and we'll write up something when we post it to YouTube to sort of cover the beginning of the video. Or maybe Kathleen and I will go back and fix it at some point. <laughs> Oh no, well that's sad. Um, I think some of the things that we covered earlier, if you could see those things, were um, that a lot of times with younger children making any game about storytelling mm -hmm. and incorporating stories in your gameplay is really great because it um, definitely increases engagement with the younger kids. Yep. And at the two, three, four year old level, mm -hmm. imaginative play is at its peak mm -hmm. and they want to make stories out of everything. And generally. some of those stories are going to be real weird. And you just say, that's an amazing story and you move on. <laughs> <laughs> like so weird. Okay. But the next one we're going to do is Memory Palace. You have oh yeah. I have Palace. those bots over there. I have so many boxes. And Memory Hold Palace on. is actually the game that we have set up right now. Um, and there are more, uh, what are these, squares that you can set out to represent different rooms in your memory palace. So this game actually uses a, I think it's an ancient Greek philosopher thing. Um, ancient Greek, you can't reach the box. No, I'm Kathleen, too short. The box. I'm sorry. It's okay. okay. Um, the Here ancient, is the box. The ancient Greek idea that all of our memories are stored in a palace in our mind. And that's how some of the ancient Greek orators like remembered some of their very long two and three hour speeches is by coming up with sort of um, landmarks in their memory palace. So they might think of part of their speech while they are in a beautiful entry hall with the horse sculptures. That is this. Um, but in a kid's game, so you can see that we have like really cute little rooms. And again, this is only some of them because we couldn't fit all of them on our camera view. But we have a music room and a cute front door and a bathtub and a library and a garden and all sorts of pretty things. And in this game, you and your uh, friends are going to take turns placing animals, different types of animals, this one's a panda, eating bamboo, in your memory palace. And you just do that by drawing one off of the stack. You place it in a room. I'm going to place this panda here lounging on this beach chair. And then you tell a story about it. So I might say, one day there was a panda that I found swimming in my swimming pool. And he was, you know, was trying to float on this green dragon here, but he fell off and he couldn't get on. So I went and I helped him and I put him on the green dragon pool float. And then we had a lovely afternoon together. And then you flip that piece over. Um, and everyone goes around and takes turns doing that. So if Kathleen wants to do this pink flamingo. Oh, the pink flamingo. Um, one day I walked into the dining room and I found a pink flamingo who had gotten in from outside from our garden. And he was trying to eat the lobster that we had cooked that night for dinner yep. because he smelled the shellfish and he wanted to come in. And I was like, oh, no, pink flamingo, don't eat my lobster. All right. And we would keep doing that until we filled up all the pieces of the board. And the great thing about this is you can do it with two squares, two rooms. You can do it with three rooms. And you can, you know, make it go up and down up until uh, 16 different rooms, which is a lot of stuff. Um, and then we would take turns trying to remember the stories and the animal in the room. So if Kathleen would like to try and remember my Wait, story. Wait, I want to do one more. Oh, you want to do one more? Yeah, we need two more. Okay. Because it's been too I'll easy. <laughs> This is my pet turtle, Tommy the turtle, and he got out one night and I was so worried about him because um, I couldn't find him anywhere. So then I went into my father's library to get my hot cocoa and I found him hiding underneath the our, our, the, the footstool. I Excellent. think that has another word. Ottoman? But yes, Ottoman. That's what I was thinking of. All right. Um, and the turtle was hiding under the Ottoman. Oh, and oh, yes. you're an ant. Okay, okay. You're I'm going to pick ant? a different animal. Okay. All right. So I have a red ant, and I am going to put my red ant, let's see, over here. So one day I was coming home from school, and there was an ant on my doorstep. We'll put him over here. 
And he wanted to come in because he was really hungry and he wanted something to eat. And I said, but Mr. Ant, you know what happens if you give a mouse a cookie? He's going to ask for a glass of milk. Do you want a cookie? And he said, no, I just want to eat the crumbs off of your floor. And that's what he did. Hmm. Okay. So now I have to go through and say what things are. Yes. Um, so I am now the storyteller and I have to say what things are. And depending on the abilities of the child, it's really great if they can try and retell some of the story. For younger friends, we don't make them do as much. And for mm -hmm. older friends, we make them do more. Yep. Um, but for example, I know that this is a panda who was swimming in the swimming pool and tried to get on the dragon floaty, but fell off. And Melissa helped him um, because he almost drowned. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So I think this is a monster. I think this is a monster, too. So, yeah, so if, I don't want to do it because I think it's a monster. So ah! there are some of these that are monster tokens. So they are the same on the back and monsters on the front. And if you pull one of those over, oh, no, you misremembered something. But that's okay because we just pulled him back over and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> or you lose and horrible things happen. No, no don't it's do that. not that type of game. It's a fun, happy, cooperative game. I believe that this one was the ant, maybe. No, oh, maybe. Oh. Uh oh. Because he was eating the food. What do I do if I don't remember? Well, if you flip it over. Oh, it's, no. It's a pink flamingo. It's, it's a pink flamingo. Ant. It's not an ant. It's not okay. a problem. We just flip it back over and come back we to flip it, later. it back over. Okay. And I say, well, now remember, Miss Kathleen, I think the ant was by my front door. Oh, okay. So I bet this one was the ant because he wanted to go in and eat all the food that was down in this room. And so here's the ant. And he was sitting on your front door waiting for you to come home from school and asked if he could come yeah. in to eat. And, and then we get that. Yeah, and then and you keep going. And if you get monsters, uh oh, you misremembered. And I think, like, if, if you you're really playing, over. yeah, if you're really playing by the rules and want winning and losing in this game, if you flip over more than one or two monsters, if you mm -hmm. flip over all three monsters, you lose the game. Yep. But this game is really more about the storytelling. And also using a memory palace and using storytelling to enhance memory. Yeah. So I think it's fascinating. I know. Did you know, um, when I was a little kid in school, there was a guy who came in and taught us how to remember things through storytelling. Ooh. And um, he made us all sit with our eyes closed and we had to visualize all, the whole story that he was telling us. And he taught us the order of the 13 states and when they signed the Constitution. And do you still remember it? I remember some of it. I remember <laughs> Delaware was first because it was a plate, and then there was a pin stacked on top of Delaware, which was Pennsylvania, and then it just kept going on and on. But it was really fascinating, and that's what this game that's reminds me of. Yeah. And again, there's lots more cards and stuff, but yeah, there's generally 16 rooms, so it gets really hard when you yeah. just start doing all of the all of the stuff. But um, yeah, so that is Memory Palace. Yeah, all right. What should we talk about next? Uh, do you want to talk about Story Cubes next, or do you want to do Once Upon a Time? Oh, no. I think we need Story Cubes and Telltale, right? Yeah, Telltale. Let's do those What next. about Lion in My Way? Let's talk about Lion in My Way first. That kind okay, of let's do Lion in My Way first. That I think kind that's of relates younger. to the things. All right. So. It's Lion in My Way. Is I think you have Lion in My Way. Yep. All right, so if you have ever been to a birthday party at Labyrinth and you have had Mr. Arsenio run your birthday party, you are very familiar with this game. Um, it is one of the staff's favorite, in particular Mr. Arsenio's favorite, and he is the best at it by far, out of all of us. <laughs> um, but this is a game where you are trying to overcome a series of obstacles. So this might be good for kids that might get frustrated if they can't do something the first time right away. Oh my goodness, look at all the cards. So in this game, we have home, which you can't really see, which we are trying to get to. But oh no, because it's 2020 and horrible things happen, we have to go through several home obstacles to get home. So we have a desert, and I'm going to pick some good ones. Let's do a dark, scary tunnel. What else have we got? Bees. And we'll just do three for now. Okay. And then you're going to hand out these supply cards. And it depends on the number of kids that you're playing with, however many um, I think three is usually a good number. All right. And then you're going to have the kids look at the cards or you're going to look at the cards and you're going to have different things. So on my cards, I have a pair of, um, stilts 
I have a bin of fireworks, and I have a jeweled chalice, or what your kids might call a cup. <laughs> what do you have, Kathleen? I have a hand crank siren with a light. I have a um, underwater air suit. I think it's a spacesuit, Kathleen. A spacesuit? You think that's a spacesuit or one of those things that you go to the bottom of it? Well, it doesn't have a hose at the top. For okay, spacesuit. <laughs> I don't know. It's a protective it's suit outerwear. And I have a crazy huge viney plant. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we have to use these items creatively to get through some of these obstacles. And you can do it such that one kid does it at a time or they can work together. Again, this is like one of these really flexible games that whatever works best for your kids is what you can do. So I think you should go first with the bees. Okay. I am going to go first with the bees because in order to get through the bees, I am going to use... Um, my, uh, space suit, and I'm going to wear my space suit, which will protect me from all of the bees coming to sting me and help me get through all the bees. And then I am going to, um, also, while I'm in my space suit, I'm going to use this very large siren and crank it as I'm walking through the bees to make sure that other oh. people don't know about, you know, don't to make sure the that bees. they realize and that I'm protecting them from the bees. That's very nice of you. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Yeah. Right. And I think you successfully I think the bees. I did. I think I conquered right. the bees. So you get rid of those cards and you get new ones. I get new cards. Yay. New cards. Okay. All right. I want so the next cards. one. I didn't like my plan. I have to go to the lion last. All right. So next we have a dark tunnel. And I'm going to look at my cards. And I see these fireworks here. Well, the tunnel's really dark, so I'm going to do the really unsafe thing of lighting the fireworks off in the tunnel to make light so that I can see. Um, but then, you know, I might get kind of thirsty going through the tunnel. It, it's dark and it's long, so I'm going to make sure I have water in my jeweled chalice to get through. What do you think? Can I get through the dark tunnel? Um, either that or you're going to blow it up. Yeah, one way or the other. <laughs> I'm okay with either solution, honestly. <laughs> yes, I think you successfully made it through the dark Yay. tunnel. Yes. All right, how are we going to get through the line? Ooh, I have some new things. Oh, should we do I... this one together? Mm hmm. Cool. You want to do yes, it? Let's do it together. I okay. have a saw, which I don't want to saw the lion in half just based on principle. No. That doesn't seem very nice. Hmm. I have a shower curtain, I have some, and I have some candy. What do you have? I have a trampoline. Oh. Which would be fantastic, I think, for... For, um, for the lion? For, no, I'm going to jump <laughs> over the lion. Um, I think we take your candy mm -hmm. and throw your candy so that it attracts the lion mm -hmm. and he goes towards the candy. And then while he's not looking at us, we use the trampoline to jump way high over him and get to the house. And I want to use the shower curtain as a parachute because if we're so high, I don't want to hurt myself when we fall. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah I like it. Okay, so, good job. Lion but in that's my way. lying in my way. Lying in my way, we call it RPGs for babies. Um, you can really, you have kind of what your uh, equipment is. Mm -hmm. You can come up with your character, and then you have some kind of obstacle yeah. that you have to deal with. Yeah. And there's a ton Lots of Lots of choices. Yeah. It is very, very interesting. And super fun. And very freeform. Yes. Which is always nice. Yes. All right, tell tale and story. Oh yes, yeah. that's you. Ooh, yeah. Um. So we're gonna do two of my favorite storytelling um games, and uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is, and you may have seen these Rory Story Cubes. Um, if you have ever seen these before, they are very well known. It is a free form. Oh yeah. There you go. Yep. They are free form, uh, very free form. They have a lot of different ways inside that you can potentially use them. Um, the thing that I like about them is that these are the original ones. The orange ones are the original ones. But in years later, um, Rory, who I've actually met, he's a very nice guy. Yeah. That's um, good. Yeah, he had made other ones like the action ones and there's voyages and there are there's actually a lot. We actually mm -hmm. just got Star Wars story cubes, which I think is fantastic. Well, they're so cool. There's a Wookiee and an Ewok and Yoda or Baby Yoda if you prefer and all sorts of cool things. Those yeah. are really fun. I like those. So a if lot. you have a kid who loves Star Wars but doesn't like to write uh Rory Story Cube Star Wars is a great idea. 
But what I like most about this is with these other ones, you can mix and match. And it's very, very hard to see on our, um, on our camera. But if you look, they're different colors based on which set they come from. I know it's Voyages is green. Um, Actions is kind of blue. And the original ones are black. Um, the thing that I like to do and what we used to do in some of the classes that we ran is mixing the actions with the um, the original ones because the original ones are all kind of nouns mm -hmm. or subject matter and the actions can all be verbs. So if you mix them together and make the child um, choose one of the black ones and one of the blue ones, then they have to say a sentence or a story with those two elements. And we usually do it in sentences and we go back and forth. So I might say, <laughs> um, one day I was um, digging in my backyard and I told my dad that I wanted to dig all the way through the entire earth um, so that I could come out on the other side because he told me I would end up in China and I wanted to dig through the middle of the earth. And um, so I have the earth and I'm digging and I can talk to the child at that point mm -hmm. about subjects and verbs and subjects and predicates and mm -hmm. predicate um, clauses and all kinds of stuff, which is one of the things I really like about Rory Story Cubes. Yeah. And these are another one that right, like this is tiny. I, you can fit this in a pocket or a purse or, you know, on an airplane again. The Tupperware on an airplane, can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they're nice, like, chunky dice, so yeah. they have a nice, good weight to them. Yeah, but that's kind of Rory Story Cakes. Now, as you might notice, there are some very, very kind of abstract um, images on Rory Story Cakes. I find with a lot of young children, although they like them and they like the dice aspect of them, sometimes the pictures mm -hmm. can be very hard for them to relate to. Right. I actually find older children and adults like Rory Story Cubes, they tend to like them better than younger children. And there are some yeah. things, like there's an apple and a clock, and so there's some things that are pretty easy to see mm -hmm. but there's also some kind of more yeah, esoteric like, pictures there's, there's one that's just an arrow yeah i don't know if that's an actor or if it's an original but yeah so yeah. some of them might be hard so for the children who need something a little bit more substantial in the storytelling this is my absolute favorite it is called telltale and it is basically the same concept but it is um cards instead of dice and I love Telltale. I have used Telltale so many different ways in so many different situations. Um, and as I was saying earlier, which we didn't have any sound for, so you don't know, um, <laughs> my son has a really hard time with writing and always has. And part of his problems is coming up with a story or having it in his head long enough to get it out. And when he was in first grade, he had to write spelling sentences. And it was pure horrible nightmare every single day <laughs> like there was crying and it was so miserable you were dating huh both of us it was so <laughs> terrible um and what we would do is take these Roy, or these uh telltale cards and he would randomly draw a card and that would be whatever he had to write his spelling sentence about so it was um you know, box or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I had a box of cereal this morning. And it would help him get ideas. Get over the... Yeah, so this was great for spelling sentences. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we used to do that we had a ton of fun with when um, he was little is we would, um, at night, we would use these for bedtime stories. Mm -hmm. And he would give me five cards because he always wanted me to make up stories for him. <laughs> and I would start running out of ideas and he would give me five cards and then I would make up a story about that. And as he got a little bit older, he wanted to start telling stories. Brilliant. So I would go through and take five cards and he got a little bit of time to make up a story. And they were very, very silly, mm -hmm. but it was great. It was a really fun activity that we did before bed. Um, the other way that I have used these, and this is what we're going to do today, is I used to teach, um, you can't see that at all. <laughs> yeah, I used to teach, uh, teachers 
how to use games in classrooms. And um, we did a bunch of uh, like teacher, what is it? Workshops. Work, teacher workshops. In service days. Yeah, in service days um, for how to use some of these games in the classroom. And Telltale is one of my absolute favorites for that. I would give an entire room full of teachers one card each. And we would come up with, cooperatively, we would come up with a list of things that they were working on in their classroom, which is what Melissa did, which you might not be able to kind of sort of see. see. Um, but we would come up with this and I'd write it on the whiteboard and I'd be like, okay, y'all are working on description words in kindergarten and adjectives. So we would write adjective on the board. Um, maybe in older grades they were working on similes or hyperbole or metaphors mm -hmm. and we would write those on the board sometimes it was science teachers yes. and i'd be like um you know they're working on the chemical um or like scientific <laughs> method or okay. something and they would come up with all the words in the scientific method and the students had to use all of these in their story so we're going to try it um, Melissa wrote really hard things on no, this list. No, we have easy, medium, and hard. We have easy, medium, and hard. So we have verb, adjective, noun, which are the easy ones. Uh -huh. We have simile, hyperbole, and metaphor. And then we have alliteration, onomatopoeia, and euphemism. Yes. And teacher and friends, this is a Zoom-friendly activity. Yes. One. Check this out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Here, you want another card? No, I want that one. I want that one for my euphemism. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just handing us five cards. We'll see how many of the things we can hit. Um, so another thing that we do, younger kids, we usually lay out all the cards and we let them look at them and they get to choose which one they add to the story. With um, adult people, we usually, <laughs> or older kids, my son loves it. We do impromptu storytelling where you don't get to look at the other side oh. and you just have to flip the card and add it to the story. Are we doing impromptu? Yeah. Okay. We're doing impromptu. Okay. You want to start our story? I'll start our story. Okay. All right. So we're, are we going to try and go in order here? I don't care. Doesn't I think matter. you just do it and then we scratch it off when we got it. Okay. 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 My handy highlighter. Okay. All right. So one day in the before times, I decided that I wanted to go shopping. No, you have to flip it over. You're oh. not allowed to play. Well, I flipped it this way. Oh, okay. Oh, huh. okay. You looked at it before you had to say, but that's fine. That's fine. Okay, you decided to go shopping. Okay. And? And? No, you don't get to keep going. I have to add. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can make up another sentence if I you could. want. I don't want to, but I used a verb. Okay. Yes, you went shopping. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, or you're trying to get your kids not to say and then, mm -hmm. um, while shopping... I <clears throat> noticed that there was this crazy man riding through the mall on a horse. And I thought that was the most bizarre thing because I live in New York City. And why is there this weird cowboy man riding on a horse in the um, shopping mall? All right. So I think we've got adjective and noun in there. Okay. I'll cross those out. Okay. All right. So then, which we're not going to use. But I got tired of shopping in the mall, so I went home and I had some delicious cereal. And does it tell me what type of cereal it is? Cornflakes! Oh. I decided to have some cornflakes. And the cornflakes tasted like straw. Hmm. Hmm. And that's my simile. <laughs> so there. Okay. <laughs> Apparently it's a competition now. Um, okay. And, um... <laughs> and I saw on the news while I was eating my uh, my cornflakes that tasted like straw, I saw that there was a um, enormous, huge, gigongous um, uh, escape from a local ranch that was located on historic Route 66, and that all of the cows had gotten loose, and they... Um, have been moving all over the country and <laughs> um some of them had even made it all the way to new york city wow i think that's hyperbole i think that's very uh, hyperbole. borderline hyperbole Aww. all right all right so then the cows um needed to get rounded back up again but of course no mere human could round up all the cows so we had to call in a wizard 
and the wizard was sunshine on a summer's day um, and was able to start waving her wand around. <laughs> I'm going to let you see what happens to the cows. But there's my metaphor. At least laughing. Well, at we, have, we have the cowboy that you just left in the mall. Okay. I was tired of him. He had a horse. <laughs> in, in the, the mall. mall. Because he's chasing the cows. Yeah, and he was crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, there's not very often. Okay. Oh, dear. We only have one beer. Right. And I think it's you. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. So, um, so now we have a fairy rounding up cows. It's okay. a wizard. A wizard. A wizard rounding up cows. Or um, maybe not. And we we noticed in um, New York on one of the very, very busy streets that all the cows were going the wrong way on a one-way street. And then the wizard was there, the cowboy was there, and all of the perfectly pretentious police people um, were pushing the, um, the pushy cows down the one-way street. I that's gone, alliteration. I would have gone with pompous cows, but <laughs> all right. That's alliteration. <clears throat> the wizard decided that their job was done, having made the cows sort of all go in one direction, and poof, went back to their castle. Okay. And, um... <laughs> I look very smart right now. <laughs> and I don't know if I can get you <laughs> some in the last one, but we'll see. Um, and... We realized that the cow, the cowboy had gotten all of the cows. The wizard was back in their castle and we jumped for joy and wiggled our tush and our moneymaker and um, danced the night away. I'll give you a euphemism for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and that is Telltale. Telltale with educational aspects. Yes, with the educational aspects. Or you can just make up silly stories. Or you can just make up stories, silly stories. And as you can see, um, doing the uh, doing the impromptu way makes your stories go in very, very weird directions. So if you want to tell a more structured story, doing things where you can choose the card that you mm -hmm. add next can definitely make a more structured story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Oh, and you can that. work on those kind of things. <laughs> I think some of the things that I've learned with very, very young children, and I think we did it a little bit just because we weren't all that ready, but um, we making sure that they don't constantly say, and then this happened, and then mm -hmm. this happens. And a lot of times what Mr. Justin and I used to do with the kids is we would lead them like, oh, we were in the mall shopping and what could happen in the mall? And then they have to add a card to answer that question. Or, oh, there's a man on a horse. How did that horse smell? Or what did the horse want to mm -hmm. eat? Or like leading them with questions yeah. was a great way to help them get into yeah. storytelling. Um, another thing is if you're working with very, very young children, um, there is also fairy tale telltale, which is, um, has all kinds of pictures from pretty well known various fairy tales, kind of generic pictures. There's like a running rabbit and fairies and little Mushrooms. gnomes. And I think there's a cat with boots and there's a little frog with a prince hat on it. Mm -hmm. So I find that this one is really good for very young children who can retell stories that they've already mm -hmm. heard. So like Aladdin or whatever, if they watch Disney movies or something, they can use that to retell the stories, which is definitely a skill that is in the yep. um, requirements for preschool yep. is relating the story. Um, this is also great if you're doing any kind of fairy tale studies, um, reading stories, and then coming up with which cards go with those stories yep. and things like that works great. Yeah, super fun. Um, yeah, that one's great. All right. Should we go to another fairy tale game? We can. I, I love fairy tale games. All right. We've got another fairy tale game for you. You can see we have a theme today. <laughs> yes. Um, fairy tales. I love fairy tales. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we have Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time! The storytelling card game. So, yeah, this yeah. one was sort of a obvious choice for us. Kathleen's throwing things again. I am. Oh, 
there is Once Upon a Time. Oops. And it's so pretty. I don't think that how pretty it is is showing up very well on the camera, but it's it's pretty. Yeah, yeah. it is very pretty. And um, it opens like a book, kind of, sort of. It does kind of, sort of, open like a book. Ta-da! Ta-da! Beautiful pictures. Beautiful pictures and um, yeah. lots of great ideas for stories. And um, this game is... I really think that the skewer skews definitely older. You need a more plus. sophisticated someone who has read and um and really enjoys stories, mm-hmm. I think, for this. Um I also I know a lot of adults who play this all the time. So this is definitely mm-hmm. a game that skews for like I would say fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. Definitely middle school, high school, I'm any not kind sure of I oops, sorry. Oh. Why is Siri talking to us? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Siri. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I would definitely say this skews older, and um, I think it would be wonderful for like teenagers who really get into storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, do you want to start? You can start. Okay. So, what this game is is that you have three different types of cards. You have um, idea like story cards, and they'll have words on them. Um, you have interrupt cards, which um, you can use to interrupt the storyteller. Don't look at my cards. Okay, I'm not looking at your cards. Um, and you have an ending card. Um, you are trying to tell a story um, by using the concepts on your card and then um, making sure that you can play all of your cards and play your ending to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, you are allowed to take over the story if somebody mentions one of your story cards or if one of your, um, like symbols matches one of their interrupt cards. Um, so. Well, your interrupt cards matches one of their symbols. Your interrupt card matches (laughs) one of the storytelling. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um... We have, you have to start. I know. I'm starting. I, I, I had not <laughs> I had not looked at my cards yet. So, okay. Um, wow. Okay. Um, it's totally fine. Yes. Once upon a time, um, there was a, uh, there was this castle that was hidden behind a, um, a mountain and nobody knew that it was there and it was um a magical type of castle and there was a guard who guarded a princess who had been asleep for many many years um the princess had eaten some um poisoned food that uh that the guard had slipped to her Earlier in the day. I'm oh no! Interrupt card. Oh no! Okay, so I played food, which has this um thing Green. symbol. It's a thing. Oh. Um, and you interrupted me. Okay, so there's a hidden castle with a guard and a princess who had eaten some poison food. Okay, so the princess ate some of this poison food and she died. Oh and no! And that made her parents, um, the king and the queen, very, very, very sad. Oh. Um, however, fortunately for them, in the nearby village, there was a wicked, wicked witch. Interrupt. Um, I suppose the wicked witch can fly. And now we have to draw a card. And no, this. Oh, wait, no. That's not sorry. a card. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, interrupt. <laughs> there we go. And now I okay. draw a card. Yes. Oh, I forgot to draw a card. Okay, when you can draw a card. Yeah. Okay. So, um. The the Wicked Witch um, was making mischief um, with the with the princess, and um, one night uh, she went into um, she went into the princess's room, and she was going to continue to try and um, keep her asleep. Mm. Well, she's dead. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. <laughs> then I messed up. So I'm drawing a card. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the princess who is dead, um, 
the Wicked Witch goes to the princess's parents, the king and the queen, and says, if you bring me the most perfect specimen of a horse in the world, I might be able to bring your princess daughter back to life. Interrupt. What happens when I run out of story cards and only have interrupt cards? Where's your ending card? Oh. I have an you ending. have to end it oh, if okay. you run out of I, story cards. I understand. Okay. I, now I don't so have wait. Cards. So yeah, but I interrupted after the horse, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> her parents went off and found a beautiful, beautiful horse and realized that it could fly, and the horse was actually a Pegasus, and it was um beautiful. So they brought it back and they brought it into the door and showed it to the witch, and she's like, okay. Um, you, you have obviously performed this task perfectly, and, um, <laughs> then the princess comes alive, and, um... And, oh my goodness. Oh, no. And then she, as she comes to li life, the, um, Pegasus realizes, tur turns to her and says, I am actually a prince, and... and he was no! free from his enchantment, and the next day they were married. <laughs> the Kathleen wins. <laughs> Kathleen stacked the deck. That was perfect. Uh, he was freed from his enchantment. Uh, 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 uh. What was yours? So they fell the. He told her he was the prince, and they lived happily ever after. Uh, that's that's, pretty that's cool. I didn't realize they were going to be so close together. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. I didn't yeah. stack that part of the deck. Um, she says. <laughs> but this is um, once upon a time, yeah, and, and it's uh, lovely. It is lovely. As you can see, these are, I don't know, it's hard to see on this camera. It's like illuminated script. Yeah, these are illuminated script type endings. And then you have the sub story cards and then you have the interrupt cards um, that all have, the interrupt cards have these kind of symbols and all of the story cards have symbols. So when you're allowed to interrupt is when you're allowed to play one of those like that. Are there blank cards in there as well so you can make your own? I don't know, but I know that there are a ton of expansions. Mm, there's a bunch, a bunch of expansions. And there's tons and tons of ending cards and story cards. There's like a lot of story cards. Yep. English teacher um, friends, um, and I suppose other teachers, but mostly English teachers since that's who we're talking to today. Um, something that I would do with this if I was a teacher is I would have the kids play this game and then have them make up their own. Um, relevant to whatever unit of study it is that you are studying. So you could do like American literature or European literature or whatever. And it would be fabulous and super fun. You should yeah, do that. For sure. Um, okay. And that is uh, Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Lovely. Super yeah. fun. All right. And let me just check our list to make sure we are on task. Yep. All right. So, our last storytelling game, I think, is one that's probably not super well known, but is super fun, and it has a penguin on it. So, this is Wing It. I love this game. And I love it, too. And, I mean, there's a penguin on it. A flying penguin. There's a penguin. And I think there's expansions for this one, too, but we didn't get There is an out. expansion. So, this game is super simple. So, it is kind of like any of these games, like Apples to Apples, or sort of storytelly, judgy games. Um, but this one is better because the stories are much more interesting. So the way this works is everyone gets five resource cards. Two, two, that's you have three, four, five, five, yeah. All right. And then someone else, this game is actually for four and up, but Kathleen and I are going to try and play it at two. Mine were blank, so I'm going to take some other ones that have actual <laughs> Mine were also ones. blank. So these do have blank cards. These do have blank cards. So you can, like, make up your own resources. So that's fun. Like, if this was me, I would, like, do dumb stuff with my friends. Like, making them silly things. All right. I don't know how many cards you have left. Uh, close enough. Okay. Oh, ooh, I have very appropriate ones for our current situation. So then the judge, who's going to be me because I'm sitting near the box, reads the prompt. And these are all super fabulous and really quirky, and I love them. So this one says, as an advocate for women's rights in Victorian England, you simply cannot stand the hoop skirts and petticoats you are forced to wear day after day. You want to draw attention to the issue through a dramatic act of protest on Fashion Row in downtown London. But if you are caught, it will ruin your prospects for marriage. Oh my. So now each player will take a turn using exactly three, no more, no less, of their resource cards to come up with a creative solution to the problem. And then the judge will judge the winner. I'll give you a hint. In this scenario, it's going to be Kathleen. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, I don't have very many Victorian-esque things in my hand. 
Yes, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so, in um, Victorian England, I'm protesting... Uh, I am protesting hoop skirts. Yes. Well. Because you can't stand them. Right. But you also want to still be marriageable. Marriageable. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to then, um, I believe that I am going to break through the constraints of my hoop skirt <laughs> and various things by eating a box of 20 chicken nuggets and seven quarter pound hamburgers. And all of the women and I are going to get together and through the miracle of time travel, we're going to have McDonald's bring <laughs> us junk food and we're going to teach everybody how fantastic junk food is and how, look, if we eat these box of 20 chicken nuggets and seven quarter pounder hamburgers, we obviously can't fit in these ridiculous contraptions and isn't this food so much better. And then if it doesn't work mm -hmm. and we haven't bought off all of the people in Victorian England <laughs> with the future of fried um, fast food, oh then goodness. we're going to take a whole bunch, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of smelly running sneakers and we're just going to start throwing them at everybody. And they're going to be so upset with the smelly running sneakers that they're going to be like, oh, okay, if you just want to wear like an elastic waist, that's cool. Great. All right. I have a different plan. <laughs> and I, I'm the judge, so I wouldn't usually get to do this, but there's two of us. So we're yeah, going to work. But if there's anyone at all watching, you can judge. And this is still fun. Mm -hmm. So it's Victorian England, and, you know, the worst thing that you can do in Victorian England is, oh my goodness, show your ankle. So I'm going to go stand in front of a windmill and show that even though I have this hoop skirt on, the windmill is so strong, it's going to blow up my skirts, and they're going to see not only my ankle, but my shin and my knees. Uh -oh. I can't see the rest because, of course, I have bloomers on that, like, practically adored my knees. Now, after doing that, that might impact my, uh, how desirable I am to marriageable fellows. So, I'm going to lure the fellows in with two things. A limousine that smells like waffles. In this case, it's going to be a horse carriage um, that smells with waffles, which I have made with my very full spice rack. <laughs> or perhaps I could use my very full spice rack to attract the fellows as well. Right, because if you cook for them, they will come. Exactly. If you cook waffles. And I mean, spices are like, you know, the bomb in Victorian England. For sure, because mm -hmm. all their meat is rotten. Exactly. So they <laughs> need spices. Yeah. So you would be very meritable, and maybe they would think your knees were attractive. Maybe. Maybe. I'd have to rouge my knees. <laughs> so that's a thing. So then the judge would say, oh, Melissa, your story is so fabulous. You are the winner. And I would get to keep that situation card. And in theory, you play until someone has three situation cards. But I think this is a game where you don't really, you, you don't keep score. No. <laughs> it's not that type of game. Yes. The woman, well, one of the people who helped create this, or the woman who um, created this, is so funny. <laughs> All of these cards just remind me of her. Yeah. Um, she is hilarious and lovely, and she's a very good friend of mine. And um, we were one of the first stores in the country to carry it but now you can find it at stores all over she's insane she went and visited before coronavirus and all of this stuff she went and visited like almost every game store in the country wow. she like took months and would travel around and go and show people this game and she came here and she was really nice yeah. and i like her very I think, much i think she and i went to the same school too really i think so oh cool but yeah, yeah all of the like the prompts are just hilarious. Like this one I relate to very much out of 2020. It says your parents and all the other adults in the neighborhood are lured out of their houses at 5.30 p.m. every day by the music of a mysterious ice cream truck. <laughs> and they return home too late to cook dinner. You and the other neighborhood kids agree that something must be done. So I also have the very appropriate 2020 card, 12 pack of toilet paper rules. This thing is golden. So I think I would use that as part to get them back. But they're just like <laughs> lovely, charming situations. I don't see any in here that are like, gross or inappropriate no i think you definitely probably if you're playing with younger children you probably want to read through some of yeah. the situations i remember that there was one about this is a guillotine like, you had, yeah and there was one about like you caught your husband with somebody else or something i think yeah, so or, there might like, be some sanitization it does say 12 plus on the on the box um 
So I would say that's appropriate for 12 year olds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. there wasn't anything super bad in yeah, it. Yeah, so it's not um, like, uh, what's the, the, like some of the other sort of storytelling games that are just gross for the sake of being gross. Yeah, no, not at all. So, yeah. And um, penguins, guys, penguins. Yeah. Um, she actually has a stuffed penguin that she oh. takes with her on it all has of her a name. travels. Hold on. His name yeah, is Angus B. Angus, Stout, yes. the penguin. Angus B. Stout, That's the right penguin. here. Yes. Yeah, she takes him <laughs> with him everywhere. She's in Alaska right now, and of Angus is. is there. Yeah. Of course she is. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Um, and that is storytelling for today. Yeah, I think so. I um, think that's it. Oh, yeah. we should tell about tell them about next oh, week. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's really important. Um, next week, uh, next Wednesday at 5 30, we're going to be looking at the game Election Night, which is an amazing game. Um, very appropriate now as we're getting closer to the election. Um, it is mostly a math game, so but it also covers civics, it covers geography, it mm-hmm. is a really, really deep game for game schooling. Mm-hmm. And um, the game designer is local, so he will be joining us through the miracle of Zoom Ooh. or some other oh. um, yep. fashion we'll figure that, out. that we can figure out in <laughs> this week. Um, but Jim Moran is the game designer of Election Night, and he will be joining us next week. He'll be teaching us how to play, yeah. and we'll be playing and teaching all of you how to play and showing you some of the educational aspects mm-hmm. and how you can use it to support learning at home. Yes. And, and then just so that you guys know, the it, the box says for Election Night that it is 8+, plus, which I think based on the math that I've read seems about right. So sorry, preschool crowd. Uh, we'll get something for you the week after that. Yeah, we'll definitely do something for the younger kids the next week. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think that I would definitely think younger children would have to have help in this game oh, yeah. because you're going to be doing a lot of math. I, I don't and, think they would enjoy it very yeah, much. No. But yeah, so yeah, high school, like fourth and fifth grade in high school. Yeah. Yeah, I would even say probably second and third grade because yeah. one of the sides is addition and one of the oh, sides okay. is multiplication. I didn't know there are two sides. Yep, there are two sides. There is a side that's addition. So Perfect. I would think second or third grade could do the addition mm-hmm. and then probably fourth and fifth for the multiplication. Cool. Yep. But anyway, have a lovely night. Hope that um, game schooling and virtual school and everything is going all right for everybody. Make sure to make time to play. It's important to do that. Um, and both for adults and kids.